Um. Usually for the face shape, they always have rounded edges. For adult female characters, the face tend to be oval shaped, with the sides coming down from two curves into a small rounded chin. The chin is never sharp, so make sure it's slightly rounded. As for adult male characters, the face is more angular and based on a rectangular shape. The edges are more sharper and the chin is wider. As for children and babies, their faces are usually just a blob, almost circles you could say. All the features of the face are much more rounded and closer to each other. I have to say, the eyes in manhwa are one of my favourite features of the art style. For adult female characters, the eyes and pupils are rounded, where there's a curved top line and in the bottom. For adult male characters, the eyes are based on parallelograms. The top and bottom of the eyelashes curve all the way around the shape. The pupils also appear as ellipses rather than circles. Kids are again just huge circle based eyes. Next is the nose. Usually it's just a line in the middle, one or two dots for nostrils and sometimes a rounded triangle on one side to show the shadow cast by the nose. For the front perspective of the nose, female characters tend to have softer and less defined line art compared to male characters. As for kids though, noses are usually just a dot or a line. Then we have the mouth and lips. It's usually just a jiggly line then another at the bottom to show the one on the lips. For kids, make them almost non-existent. For the side view as always, female characters are more rounded and male characters are more angular in shape. Most of the time, I see manhua artists include teeth and actually draw it properly. The top row, bottom row, and then the tongue. Don't draw teeth for kids though, they don't have them. If I'm being honest, I'm still learning how to draw hair. Anyway, when you draw hair, the main area is always set in patches rather than depicting every individual strand.
for colouring, it's really no different from any other base colouring, just colour. For shading, one hole is usually quite minimal and soft in daytime lighting. For faces, the shade colour is the skin set with stronger saturation and a slight red tone to it. A block would appear on the eyes, on the bottom inside of the nose, bottom of the lips, around the ears and on top of the forehead where the hair casts a shadow. On the neck, there's always a block shadowing the chin and jaw. Now for hair, the shading colour is again a heavier saturation tone of the base colour and done in large blocks rather than depicting every strand. In Medibang, use the pen brackets sharp brush because it automatically makes the end of the stroke sharp regardless of the stylus pressure. Where you put the shade really depends on the lighting again, so I'll show some examples. For clothes, select either dark blue or dark red depending on the environmental tone, then create an opacity layer with filter settings of burn. Again, the placement depends on the lighting and takes a lot of practice to get right. Another tip for clothes that don't fold or crease much like suits or coats, use a background to transparent gradient tool for the middle area. Filter burn is only effective for darker colours, so for light colours select normal and select red or blue around 30% or less saturation. For many banks select white, then make an opacity layer with add settings. In daytime areas, lighting is only usually applied to the hair, but in darker environments with higher contrast, light appears at the side of the face and on the nose. I'll do several examples for this. That's all I have for now for this tutorial. Let me know in the comments if I haven't missed anything. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.